It's Thursday night and it's another edition of For the Record with DJ Abbas. And we're going to get right into it tonight. I have a very special guest in the house. Um, he is described in many quarters as the godfather of comedy in Nigeria, Ali Baba. And his full name, I'm going to read it out now. I don't know. <laughs> Atuyota Alleluia Akbubome. Triple A. How are you doing? I'm fine. Good I'm to fine. have you in the studio today. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. Why have you decided I was in London for so Oh, long? no, 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 no. I think the exchange rate had kept me away because <laughs> I can't. No, there's, there's nothing that I buy here that doesn't worry my soul. Okay. 462, 463. Okay. 463. Currently. The, the exchange rate is so crazy. It's like slave trade all over again. So so most times it's like, just stay in Nigeria. Okay. Just stay, you know, even America is... Well, I know you pass through here from time to time. Oh, one, once in we a while. We hear the whispers. <laughs> <laughs> once in a while. Uh, but but uh, I, I, I come in. Mm. I come in, do private events, and go back. Indeed. But not, not really as many public events. And so... Most times it's just when my guys have something and I'm I feel like supporting yeah, the guy. Exactly, yeah. I'll just so come. We do see you annually for that. Yes. Okay. I'm going to get right into Of course, we know the brand Alibaba. Everybody knows Alibaba. Mm. However, I'm just going to behave like I don't know you. <laughs> so I'll start with the name itself. How did you get the name? Okay. Alibaba came as a spin off from uh, the middle name Alleluia, which is my baptismal yeah. name. Yeah. Alleluia was uh, given to me by my grandmother, okay. maternal grandmother, because uh, my mom was persistent in having girls okay that's my dad's opinion my dad felt she's always having girls how so many girls in total six girls okay and uh, all of them uh before you older before me and uh, we lost some though okay. and uh, so when i was born my my dad was invited and he kept saying so tall which is the meaning of atunyota Okay. The meaning of Atuyota is so tall. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. And so, on his ride from Abraka to Wari, where I was born, he kept asking the man that was sent to call him, because they were riding okay, bicycles. Yeah. And, and he said, are you sure that it's his son? He said, yes. So when he got there... True the story. Name, yes, true story. So the name he repeated, the, the word he repeated all through till he got to Wari, where I was born. Atuyota. is like, so tall, so tall. Your first name? My first name. Okay. And then the second name is the one my maternal mother gave to me, Hallelujah. Like, finally, we have okay. a son. Um, and in school, command secondary school, even primary school or job primary school, Lagos, a lot of people who knew me didn't call me Atunyota. Some called me Tatioto, which okay. is a Yoruba. You know, you know, Yoruba, yeah. Tatioto, yeah. Folklore. Yes, uh, yeah. Tatioto, Tatioto. So, some called me that. And uh, then some of them then called me. Praise the Lord. On the Hallelujah. On the Hallelujah. So do call me praise the Lord. I will now answer Hallelujah. In getting to the secondary school, they called me Ali. Okay. And it was A double L E Y and Ali. But in the university In this country, I can't have that too. Dark Ali. Yes, sir. Okay, so but as I got into the university, I was still called some called me triple A, some called me Ali B some called me a, a, some will call me uh, Atus, Atus, okay. Atus. Then I started doing stand up. The ones that will call me Ali. Okay. Now felt. Why not just school, did you say? The university. The university, okay. So the ones that will call me when I started doing, because I started stand up comedy in 1988. Years so now. that's exactly. So some of them felt that it was best to call me by a name that was more theatrical. Okay. So they added Baba to Ali. Hmm. And so from Ali to Ali. It's Baba. like a name everyone's heard for so long to the point I think I only knew your real name a couple of years ago. Ah yeah, because the other Through your Wikipedia page. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But because the the pronunciation of the name was not user friendly. Yeah. So it was a like, well, that's quite straightforward. Well, is a short one. Okay, what's the long It's like uh, <laughs> Ade Ribigbe called yes. Ade. When okay. you call somebody Ade okay, okay. or Ribigbe. Ori Bibi. Uh -huh. So it's Akbobio Hobo, Akborobo Memerere. So the Akborobo. That's all one word. No, have two you ever words. counted two words? Have you ever counted the letters? Twenty-six. Okay. This, that's <laughs> like a full alphabet <laughs> in your in one name. So it, it, it's 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 important to know that even my dad shortened it by himself when Akborobo Memerere he felt Akbobo Me 
It's the yeah. same thing. Uh, because the full meaning of Akbaru Bomemerere is that this is my life that I'm living. Okay. So he shortened it to this is my life. So it's if you look at you now, actually, your life now has become comedy. You are described as and you are the godfather of comedy in Nigeria. And it's like pretty much you wrote that handbook for what we currently now know as a type of comedy we have in Nigeria. I've known of Alibaba the MC. Um, in fact, you, Alibaba appears to have kind of like cornered and captured a certain sector of the Nigerian of the Nigerian elites. We'll come to that at yeah, some point. Yeah. So, in your 31 years of comedy, um, you've risen to the point where you're now no, no known as, as the godfather. I want to go back to the, those early periods okay. you know, of comedy. Okay. Was it by chance? I, had, I, I got into stand-up comedy by accident. And when I say by accident, um, I was a heckler. So we we'll go to events. We know, you know, you know, you know, you know people. You go to events. Yeah, yeah. I, while we're you see, like, right, anybody performing, you say something about them. You know, so that was my professional job. Okay. And when I say professional job, I, every every time there's a show, people will buy tickets so that I can sit next to them. Okay. So they can have ex exactly they can have extra fun at the event. And so one of those events um, was slated as. Uh, a striptease there was going to be a striptease side attraction and for those of us who were coming from humble and well-trained backgrounds we had not seen striptease before unless in movies okay. and so it was like well <laughs> if there's going to be a striptease let all of us go so we went there we waited and waited and this lady came on voluptuous lady nigeria no we don't know where the lady is from okay i still owe the lady Ladies. a lot yes I still owe the lady because she she jump started my career in a way. Okay. Because there she was, she came on, took off the suit that she was wearing, the jacket, took off the blouse. The layers one by yes, one. Yes, and then she was wearing a petticoat. Okay. So the long one that looks like a dress, and covered everything. Mm -hmm. And then she danced, and then removed the petticoat, and then turned around while she was back in the audience. She removed the bra, okay. was swinging the bar, and walked off the stage. stage our students were like you can't it can't be like that <laughs> you have to show us everything done. <laughs> so while that commotion was going on the organizers now said well there's this heckler that has been adding humor to the whole event mm -hmm. since let's get him to come and pacify everybody so they got me backstage and said please talk to these people a lot of them listen to you get them to just calm down and let's get this show started so i went to meet the girl i said can you come out and do this? She said she was scared because people were running on stage. And truly, yes, it was enough to scare her. And it was the first for most of them. Exactly. Some of them thought she was not human. So they would run and go and touch, touch her, her as she's doing all of that. And so she felt if she opened, it would be beyond that it would, just be, it would just be crazy. And so we listened to her. I said, okay, you know what we'll do? I'll go and pacify you. So I went back on stage and started yabbing everybody, plus student affairs officer, plus deputy registrar, plus dean, and all of all those Because some of them who came, lecturers who came, mm -hmm. had not seen the striptease before. So the hall was packed. I've never seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> so in the, in the process, of yabbing them and the students went wild because nobody in the whole Predominantly history of the life, I'm guessing. No, but nobody in the history of the school, Bende State University of Puma, had had the guts to yab student affairs officer, to yab the because what well, the rank and file. Exactly. But I, I told the student affairs officer, I said <laughs> student affairs officer, you are putting on weight, the students are losing weight. Are you sure you are not chopping our money? Students went gaga. -ga it's not far from the truth. Yes, because it was not far from the truth. But everybody laughed at it. And when the students felt that I was on the in their corner, okay. it helped. Because what they now did was that, and I told them, so just calm down. I'm going to bring the lady back now. Let her come and do So she came back on with just the petticoats and then removed it again, removed the bra, removed the pants, turned around, danced a bit and ran off the stage school went gaga and this was the first time on stage it was my first time on stage and surprisingly it was my first time as an mc as well as well because the guy that was the mc was pretty much became yes the fidelis blackboard no no Bugabo, and the stella oh stella ole mm -hmm. those, those were the two mcs so they now added me to the so yeah. i was the third and we were using fm mics 
you remember the FM mics with one small thing yeah, down the bottom, on yeah. the bottom. Those are like the first that. generation exactly microphones, wireless, yeah, so, yeah. and it was square. Yes. So they brought one more extra um, one FM more mic, mic FM mic. So I held the mic. And we're talking. That's where radio mics actually yeah, exactly yeah. exactly. So I had one, and so as they were emceeing their event, I would chip in something. Everybody would laugh. So I told them I said I would perform better from inside the audience. So that was where I sat. Okay. And so all through the event and cons and continuously, every other event that was held in school, thereafter, that was what they called me for. So I always got tickets. So they'll say how many people are coming with you? I say maybe four. They'll give me four tickets or five. That was your payment. Was exactly. I wasn't paid. And my first show that I was paid for was a show by Amarods. We called Mr. Bensu, okay. and I was paid. It was I was supposed to be paid uh, ten naira, and the guy gave me five naira. When the event finished, I called the guy. The guy said they didn't make money. So my first show was five naira. The second show I got paid ten naira. The other one I got paid twenty naira. And then gradually, before the end of a semester, I was in the hundred naira bracket. Bracket. Meanwhile, my allowance in, in a month, month was I was going to have naira. And my dad would also even squeeze me. Sometimes it won't come in that month. It will come the next month. Probably knew you were going to be okay anyway. But anyway, when I started making that kind of money, I didn't even bother. So that was how I started stand-up comedy. And I'm not, I don't think everybody knows the story you just told not right now. People, yeah. Because it's it's a lot of people in the creative world who are very successful. I read a lot of autobiographies. Yeah. You know, similar stories. You know, kind of like fall into it, stumble into it. By and accident. Then, and, then, and then now... I'm going to break your career into three segments of your 30 years. So yeah. your first 10 years, obviously, you were in Benin. I was in Benin uh, between, two th between uh, 1988 and 1989. Between that time, I was shuttling between Lagos. To do events? To do events. So I did events for Coca-Cola. I did events for uh, Guinness. Did event. I did Miss Harp. Miss Harp used to be a beauty contest that was nationwide. Okay. And then the beauty pageant took place. And the lady that won had an accident. And Punch put a newspaper mishap in a mishap. That's a brilliant, that's, that's a, that's a, and an so, editor's dream headline. And so the story just went viral. And, and it killed the time. brand. It killed the brand. I can imagine. So um, subsequently, I, I figured that people who were in the outside world were paying more than student shows. So in student shows, they want to say, okay, 100 naira. Then you the go out, corporate, you charge 300, you charge 400, you charge 500. And that was a lot of money at the time. It was the kind of money, okay, look at I get 100 naira a month. And then I go do one show for just one day. I come back to school and I have 500 naira money for four months. So what, what they did was that... So lifestyle changes, obviously. Of course, because... My room was just about like this. You know, you have a double bunk Dumping, on one yeah, side, yeah. single bunk on one side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I bought everybody out. So you had your Kept, own room. So I had the room to myself, had a double bunk in the room. Big boy. <laughs> and then I went to Aki. Uh, then uh, Yakilome, mm. uh, Chris Oyakilome was also in Aki. So I bought a, an Aki table that had drawers and brought it in the room and put a video player, VHS player. And TV and video. And TV. I was a big boy. <laughs> Not LDLD is no, not no, as no, big no. as I was a you big were a bigger boy. boy. <laughs> so I was living the life. Uh, didn't bother about my so when you came to my room at that time, you will see on my door, Mr. Unilag, I was there, Mr. Uniport, I was there, Mr. U uh, Lasso, I was there. Just like that. What was the comedy scene like in Lagos at the time? Was stand up existing? No, no, stand up wasn't existing. What was happening was that you had people who were MCs who could make people laugh. Who could make people laugh. So you had a BC or Latin law yeah. who could make people laugh. You had Patrick Doyle who could make people laugh. You had Femi Jarrett who could mm -hmm. make people laugh. You had uh, Tony St. Ike who yes. could make people laugh. And um, you had uh, Mohamed Danjuma yes. who could also make people laugh. Tunji Shoti Miri who could make people so laugh. So there were no comedy shows. Yes. Obviously. And then John Chuku. What oh, was that? John Chuku. Of blessed memory. Of yeah. blessed, John Chuku was an MC who had a lot of jokes. He was um he was actually I he was somebody I was very, very familiar yes. with, yeah. Um the only person that would have even been called a comedian was jo uh, Jude Weiwei. Okay. Jude Weiwei then took off after the Ogboruku. Okay. The, you know the yeah, Ogboruku. Yeah, yeah. And they figured that he was Ogboru's PA. Okay. And so they were looking for all of them. So he took so off to America. Of the, exactly. The, so the Okaku so when the I, I, exactly yeah. the Okaku. So when I came on the scene, there was need to reposition myself 
as um, because people didn't believe that the there was a career in it. Some still don't. Funny, yeah. though, uh, <laughs> no, it, as, no, no, as, no, as, no, as, no, as, as it sounds, I know, yeah. no, but, some, it's but but then it was that because when I told my dad that I wanted to be a comedian, he stopped paying my fees because he didn't see any good in it at all. Like Yoruba people will say, Awada. Oni yeah yeah. What what what? Allah iri koshi. What kind of what what do you want to become? You, so you want to just be called a comedian to so do what? At what point did the Alibaba brand in terms of um, shows kick in? Well, between 1988 and 1989, and, and then 1990 and 1990. Okay, it was time to build the brand for people to recognize. Okay, and that took another five years. Of making people see the value in what I was doing. Mm. So in 1996, uh, Alibaba, the MC. Yes, MC slash comedian. Yeah. Um, in 1996, the big break came. There was a product called Satsum Brown. Okay. I wouldn't know that was out at the time. It, at was, the time. it was beer. Okay. It was a beer called Satsum Brown. The final word. That was the advert. You didn't kill that one too. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Satsum Brown. But the thing was that Satsum Brown was very strong. The alcohol level was higher than everyone. Than the others, yeah. So people could drink one bottle and, and knock out. That, okay. And so uh, people appreciated it. Mm -hmm. And then they needed to do a tour around those. So they took me on a tour. So I went on a tour with uh, a guy called I.D. Iyang. Mm -hmm. And we toured about like 18 states. And of the 19 at the time. Of the 19 at the time. And out of that, my fees came to 1.6 million naira. Then? Then. 1996. And so when they gave me that check, it was a bank draft. They are taking their well, withholding tax yeah, and yeah. everything. So they gave me the check and I looked at the check. I was like, make photocopies and use it as bookmark in all my books. Because it was like, this just proves that I could do more and more and be more. 1.6 million naira yes. in 1996. 1996. If you get paid that now, it's a whole lot it's of money. It's a whole lot of money still. So at that time, it just proved that what I was on was the right course to take. Gradually, and don't forget that this was just bulk sum yes. from one event. So I had the Coca-Cola uh, World Cup tour. I and had in that window with, as well. The, in, in that space. So between 95, 96, 97, 96 was World Cup. And between that time till... 2000, it was just a climb. It was a climb because I was getting events. I was invited to do events for IBB. I was invited to do events for governors of different mm -hmm. states. I was invited to, I met Diagbon one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. I did an event for um, Larry Wadju, who was um, commission, uh, minister for uh, works at the time before I decided. became. pretty much very high profile. Yes. And then performed to a bachelor. And then, after a bachelor, I performed to Shoneko okay. for a brief time. No comedy shows still? No, 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 no comedy shows. Just your one-on-one. -on -one. And then there were so many weddings and many events. And, just, and, stuff. and so you could, you could count the number of comedians at the time who decided to become stand-ups. And so you had Mohamed Danjuma. Okay. You had myself. You had Alain Blo, a guy called Alain Blo. And uh, there was a guy called Yibo Koko. From who was Russia, coming? Yeah, who was coming from Port Harcourt? Yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, and that was about it. But by 1997, 98, and 2000, the number had grown to include uh, Basaj, Staria Junior, uh, uh, Saint Jack, and all of these people now saw the benefits of okay. becoming comedians, and we started charging about that. So I was dictating the pace. So somebody calls me for an event that say, I want 300,000. Then? Then. And they'll be like, oh no, it's too expensive. Let's give you one. Let's. So a lot of all the banks were like, yeah. they, they actually changed dates to Which suit your availability. What I alluded to that, you pretty much had yes. almost a near monopoly yes. of, oh, of, yes. oh, of, yes. oh, of yes. that era. Oh, yes. Now, now we're in the second 10 years. So, I, so I the second right 10 now. years was now a case of uh, um, professionalizing my act. So that's the question. You're out of uni now. I was, this I was, was your I, job. This was my job. Now. Nothing so else. I had to, so I got an office. 
Okay. I got uh, a manager and got a, an office assistant. We started doing letters. So when you call us for event, we we'll do letters. We we'll come to your office. Also. And no one else was doing this comedy, no. comedy, comedy wise at yes. the time. Yes. Yes. No, nobody was doing it professionally okay. like that. Then TA had joined me. I was going to come to TA. TA, TA joined me. Then TA was uh, actually working with me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there were some who also joined us at the time but fell off because mm. uh, they couldn't. That the pace. Yes, they couldn't stand the pace, uh, face the the demands, and it wasn't regular. But you needed to know how to manage your money well. You have an event, uh, two, three events in a month, and then another month you don't have, you don't get anything again. Do some artists, do some comedians today still have that problem of managing oh, yes. those resources? Oh yes, a lot of because the thing is because it's like always up and down. For a lot of comedians, they miss the point. They think. If you get an event today and you are paid uh, three hundred thousand naira, that's it for that month. Another one will come soon. Mm. So they spend that three hundred, and, then and the next month nothing comes, and then they wait again. So because now there are many more comedians. In the fact, has... the last count we ne were nearly at about two thousand comedians registered. Registered comedians. So even in Lagos, is there an association? Yes. Okay. Comedians of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, okay. CFR. Okay. So. You you then discovered that a lot of people now started jumping in because of the kind of money the comedians were making because it was hassle free. You don't need to rent equipment. You don't need to. And bring work. You don't you don't have to go for rehearsals. As long as you're good, you just come on stage and you tell your bits. Being funny is serious business. That was my that's line. Your, that's that was no, my no, line. no 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 no. <laughs> Being funny is serious business. At what point did that become your mantra? It was in uh, 1994. I started making money and I thought I needed to do a billboard. So I took three billboards in Lagos, 1994-95. These billboards, one was in front of uh, where uh, Lagos State Government House. Alaw, no, no, the one by Marina. Okay, the state the, house. The, on the island, on the island. Yeah, yeah. the state house. Then one was uh, where Civic Center is now facing 1004, the mm -hmm. junction that comes from 1004. Mm -hmm. uh, Amadou Beloway that comes. That's, yeah, Adetokumba, uh, Yeah. Then one was uh, by four short towers, Osborne, facing the road that comes that came out of that comes out of uh, all on the Ikoi, island. All on the island. Why? Because I knew my market, okay. I knew my target market. There was no need to begin to market my service to people who would feel like, yeah, keep, yeah, what yeah, are, are you are you well? So it was deliberate to to keep on that exactly. island axis. I knew my market. Mm -hmm. I knew the people who would pay me, and I knew who to market my services to. I know where they see the billboard. Yes, the and so when they see the billboard, they will know who they want, and they will know what I was doing. So I put the being funny serious business, and then I put my pager numbers. Pagers were the Good business, was, and, and so uh, from disk engineering. So I put my pager number, the pager 197. And it brought in the deals. People will call me. Some people who saw the billboard will call and leave a message. And then I'll call them back and say, oh, no, I saw the billboard. I didn't know what it was about. And I'll tell them. So it was direct marketing, as it were. So you could negotiate and... You could, yes. And when that then happened, TA was now living with me at the time. He, 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 I did um I managed and packaged his first show in the okay, UK. Okay. And he was here for a significant period of time and he would always talk about, oh Ali, you know, I started with that was when I actually started uh, getting to know your brand okay, at okay. the time. He said, Oh no, no, I was with I was with him, you know. Yeah. And I see a lot of you in him in terms of the structure because also he's one of those that really has taken comedy and MCs oh, yes. very, oh, yes. very, very, very seriously. Tia is the number one wedding MC now in Lagos. Oh, with, 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 he, without he a doubt. Has, yeah. He has, he's nearly booked every week. Every week. And the, the principles week are week still week. the same, you know? Yes. Uh, uh, in his own case, he creates the, in fact, he's a life of the party when it comes to wedding. Uh, and uh, more so, he connects with the younger generation. As well. You know? Um, he, he does well. I, I think he does about like uh, four or five weddings every month. And uh, he's always busy. And with Within all the figures I've been hearing time. now, I yes. think I need to be calling him more regularly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. Now, 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 for an average average comedian MC, um, entry level is about like a hundred thousand naira. By the time that, these are the D levels. D then, levels. Then C level is between uh, three hundred and five. It's like to come, come and do my wedding. Come and come, do. Yes. So, then the B level is between 500 and 1 million, to 1 million and 1 million then the C and level you're the, you're the only one sitting the C, in the A level the C, the C, the C level <laughs> the B level between 1 million and uh, maybe 2 
but the A levels are two million and above. And there's some that could charge up to ten million. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the actual comedy is like your show glass and advertisement. Sure. The real income is in on those personal deals at events. Would I be right in saying that? The real income really is uh, for a, for a full time MC comedian. Yeah, it's the service that you provide yeah. is, is is the because sometimes you might get the job as MC, not as comedian. Because it's, it's, I was going to come. Yeah, yeah, yes, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference. So you could be the MC, and you get paid one point five. And then a comedian can come and get paid to be, be paid two million or two point five. Just to come in and out. Yes, and so the comedian, the, you can get an ordinary person who is not a comedian to MC. Mm -hmm. And so the person is MC, and then a comedian comes and does the jokes, mm -hmm. and so he makes about like two or three appearances, charges about like two or three million naira, and walks off. Most times, the MC doesn't earn as much as a comedian. Can every comedian be an MC? Not every comedian can be an MC, and not every com not every M uh, MC. MC can be a comedian. Because some comedian, I've, I've been to events, I do events myself, and the MC is a comedian, and some at times don't know where to draw the lines. It's oh, like yes. everything has to be funny. And no, at no, times, you know. A, there's, there's a thin line, there's a thin line there, because uh, when your, your job description is to be the MC, you just manage the event. You're the master of ceremony. Mm -hmm. If they had paid you to also be a comedian, then you begin to infuse jokes into the, uh, the so they can so if i'm a comedian mc an event what i charge it depends on whether i'm going to oh, be yes. a comedian. oh yes if, 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 okay, no, no. If, if if i come if, if you come to me and say come and be the mc and i tell you okay mc and comedian five million and you say no just do mc mm -hmm. i'll pay you three million so you won't tell a joke mm -mm. that's not possible right? I, i'm telling you i won't <laughs> I would, I'll do your, I'll do your the, show. Your audience could feel shortchanged. No, no. The Especially audience, if your name is in the bill as... The some one. of them will come to me and say, ah, you are not doing jokes. I said, the guy paid for me to be an MC. So you can separate it. Oh, I yes. never thought it was possible. Oh, no, it's to possible. It. It's possible. You could have hints of humor, hmm. but not outright ha, ha, ha. You like won't have that. a sense. No, 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 no. You won't have... Because at that time, you're shortchanging yourself. It's like, okay, listen, now. it's like somebody asking for an S-class. Okay. And you say, okay, this S class, if you want an AMG, it will have this and have that. And so keyless entry, mm -hmm. have oh, this. Yeah, one yeah, and, yeah, so. yeah, huh? and the person says, no, I don't want any of that. I just and you get away with it. Yes, but some other times, some clients will come to you and say, okay, please. And you have to bend. And you bend. And you, but then, <laughs> I, but but the other thing that I can't do is that if I'm paid to be the MC and you bring a comedian, I won't steal his thunder. I would make sure maturity. Yes, experience because because, because at times you see the competition. Mm, a cheetah won't run with a. a Have you been in such scenarios before? Oh yes, yeah, several times. Because when I'm there and a comedian is performing, I'll just keep my cool. What people then say is, ah, yeah, do some jokes now. I say no, this boy is brought here to do the jokes because I tried it once. Did they feel intimidated at times? I tried it once and it was not good. As in I, unconsciously stealing the thunder. I I got to the event late. You wanted to make and up. So, yes, I wanted to make up. <laughs> so I went all out. When I finished and I came to the table where the guy that was the MC and they were frozen. sitting down. And I said, hey, hi, guys. I said, go to Lord Jerry. Uh, you came here and you were shining. And I was like, no, I had to make up so that they don't get so upset that I mm -hmm. came late. Because flights get delayed. Oh, yeah. So, and so, 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 stop exactly. Stop and so happens, yeah. a flight that was supposed to be for 10.30 didn't take off till about 1.00. So yeah, two and a half hours in already. Exactly. And when I got back to Lagos, I headed straight to the venue, got there. They had called the guy to come in. And so he had done all the jokes and all of that. So when I got there, he was doing the jokes. And the man that owned the Vendango, they said, Okay. Ali, <laughs> Ali, you have to make up for this. I said, no problem. So, and you I went out. So when I, when I finished, he said, hey, that was why we got you. Yeah. For those kind of events, when you're paid to be MC and stand up, it's easy. But if you're paid to be stand up and somebody else is MC, you just do your bit. Mm. Most times I can give tips to the comedian that is even performing. I tell you, uh, uh, this go down jokes, this road. These yeah. jokes, these jokes won't work. This other one will work. Try and hit at this. Remember this thing that this other man said at the beginning of this and take that, make some jokes mm -hmm. around it. It will work better. Because there's nothing to prove. Any longer. Any longer. I've been there, done that. Which is which, which is why 
I had not been to London for my own show, my special. Because it always because, crosses my mind. I'm thinking. Yes, yes. Be, because everybody's been like, your, not just your here, boys, even in the states as well. It's, yes, it's, your boys have been here. A lot of them have been having shows. How come you have not come? I said. I was like, then I, I something cynical. I'm like, eh, yes, I've not been there, but my jokes have been there. So man, so. And let's talk about that right now. A few we've had a few um, comedians, quite a lot on the show. Yeah. And in music, you can copyright your music. Sure. Can you copyright your jokes? You can. How? You go, you, you, you type it out yes. and make an affidavit and then go to the Copyright Commission and register. Is it workable? Yes. Have you done that? Yes. I've done some of my jokes. Uh, but your jokes fact, are did, everywhere. Yes. I did a six hours performance in Lagos. Okay. And the you copyrighted hour, it? The six hours performance, the plan was to now bring the six hours performance out. But a lot of comedians called me and said, Ebon, ch chill out first. Don't release this video. Because if you if you watch the six hours performance, you begin to see a lot of jokes that are prevalent right now in the comedy sector that they are mine. So when you copyright them now, the fact is because of who you are, you can't feed off it in terms of litigation or anything like that. Okay. Can you? I can. Have because you? okay yes once once there was a guy who because there was a platform that was set up uh, by a telecoms company yeah. called uh, Dali Joke okay uh, people call in when they call in they do you listen to a joke yeah and so a friend called me and said oh I, I dialed this service and I heard this joke that happened between you and I at my event at his event yes okay and somebody else is telling it. I'm making money of it. So I said, no, I didn't I didn't know. Okay, let me call. So I dialed about like three, four times and got the joke. So I sent a message to one of the man's managers and said, I've heard my joke on your platform. I wasn't paid. And it's my joke. And he said, Oh no, the guy that puts it I said, that's why I didn't call the guy. It's on your platform. Is you so, are gonna take so to court. So you yeah. that I'll take to court. Did he say they said that oh yes, they said, they said oh, no, don't worry and called me and said, oh, chairman said he wants to speak with you. Okay. So I spoke with him. Another joke. Like, and he said, he said, okay, don't worry. Don't, don't worry. Don't take it. In fact, they just closed the platform. Because mm. what they said was that it meant that a lot of people who were going to upload stuff do not have right. stuff, If yeah. you listen to a lot of uh, comedians who do DVDs and all yes. of that stuff, some of the jokes they put on the DVDs are not theirs. If not most. Because if you watch from volume one to volume thirty-two of Night of a Thousand Love, yes, you can become a comedian if you know how to retell jokes. And you know how to it's a different skill. Exactly. So a lot of people who own live band don't write the songs that they perform. Tumba, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 that's the that's the industry parlance. Oh really? It's, it's Tumba. Tumba. <laughs> Tumba is a bit of everything. Exactly. No, you, what you, what you, no, 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 no. Tumba. <laughs> You never heard that. I'm, <laughs> no, 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 that makes sense. It's, 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 it's Tumba, and um, I manage, I manage, um, I manage a UK band, Sole Crew, once. Okay. And you have the original compilation, mm -hmm. and then you have the, you know, the, the make one with group. the fizzy and you want, everything. You want you hear everywhere. Every artist performs it, and they have their own twist, mm -hmm. you know, to it. I'm like, somebody somewhere must have started. Of course. Started this. So I always ask comedians, like, can you copyright? And you're the first person that actually said yes. Because yes, most of them are like, no, yes, no, no, it's never happened. Uh, because it's copywriting jokes. And I've, I've, now I know it's been issues amongst comedians yes, in the past. No, yes, you can. In terms yes, of, okay, now, so what type of, type of and I'm going to ask, it's going to be a double double barrier question here okay. right now. Mm -hmm. You are from Wari? Yes, I am. And Wari has a special pride of place today in okay. Nigerian comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, ah, Wari jokes, Wafi jokes. It's like the Marmite of, you know, Marmite is 50 50. Okay. You either love it or you hate it. Sure. But there's a specialized specialist kind of like in Nigeria now, oh, worry jokes, you know what's coming. Mm. And it's kind of giving up so many, many stars on his own. Mm. Now, how many types of comedians can you have? Okay, you see, um, what has happened is that when I started doing comedy, mm. there was need to come from a place of, uh, a, a place that I was comfortable with. And so I had to talk about my, I had to talk about my my place, my, where I came from, my place of origin. Mm. So I started doing the worry jokes. They say worry boy will do this, mm -hmm. uh, people will do this one, the worry boy will do that. So it was not, it, it was perform the jokes were about comparison. Okay. Lagos people will do this, but worry people will do yeah. this one. And it's then still gradually, today, still yes. And then 
it, there were faces. Mm. And then after that grew on a while, people were like, enough of all this worry. This. So we started talking about Ajepako and Ajebota. Okay. That Ajepako and Ajebota went on for a while. People were now nearly getting bored of it. Then we now said, oh, the rich people do this and the mm. poor people do this. Then it got up to a point that we now started doing Yoruba Hausa Igbo. Yes. And so we talked about that for a while. And then we went international. So you now be like, oh, Igbo will do this. Yes. Black people will do, do this. this. Yeah. So they were all faces. Then we got to a point where we picked up from where Fela stopped, Yabis. Okay. So you, you can get somebody come on stage. On the cuff. And, he, and he's yabbing the yahusas, he's yabbing the ibos, he's yabbing poor men, he's yabbing mm. husbands, yabbing women, uh, yabbing men, and all that. That also was a phase. So there are different elements. The strength of a comedian is based on his experiences. Real if life. You, yes. If you grew up in a polygamous home, you would definitely have a lot of stories to tell. If you grew up in a jegule, you have stories to tell. Oh, cool, cool. Like, or, yeah, or like yeah, like yeah, a borrower. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. then if, if you grew up in the barracks, you would have a mixture of people from different parts of the okay, so, so the Hausa, the Kanuris, the Igbos, the Nupes, the Ijaws, and the uh, Ilages. So you have a potpourri, hmm. if you may, of different behavioral patterns that you could yes, then blend yeah. into your So you will see that the richer the content of the material of a comedian, the more experience the comedian has mm. or has been around people who have so much experience and have shared that with him. Mm. So if you hear a TA talking about, oh, worry people do this, it's not that TA grew up in worry, exactly. but he's robbed of Tosheba Kwelara Ewe. Oh, man, Dewey. Oh, man, Dewey. Oh, man, Dewey. Oh, man, Dewey. I look at your TAs, Sheyi Law, who are not of worry extraction. Ayo, AY. AY. You know, yeah. now, Funny enough, I only realized not too long ago, maybe about five years, that Ewa is actually a Yoruba boy. A Yoruba boy. <laughs> you get it? No, is Ewa is actually is a Yoruba a, boy. A, 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 I get you there. Akororo is actually from Mundo State. Yes. You know, I, those are things I found out in very, mm. very recent times. But like you rightly said, comedy is life. Your experience kind of like determines. Now, is the real skill in your ability to combat that experience into what would get people oh, and yes. build an identity around it? Um, you see, when, when you're a comedian, you are a reflection of the society mm. in your jokes. So you take the jokes, you take the society, mm. you mirror it into your performance. And it, it's like telling people the truth. And while they are laughing, while they are laughing, you stick the truth in. You tell them a joke, while they are laughing, you stick the truth in. It's a fantastic so, vehicle too. Yes. To, to, it, so it's just like a conveyor belt mm. to take your, your message across. Like... Um, uh, you decide that you want to do a joke about slavery mm. and you talk about why so you hear a lot of people say oh country is so hard now mm -hmm. this is a joke pattern so the, because the country is hard because you know what happened with slavery then you now hear a comedian say the way this country is hard if they bring that ship again climb up people <laughs> you know so that's 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 milking out of an experience um, sad or sad or fun exactly uh, which is also why a comedian has to draw the line between being funny and being offensive i was fine, you, you, you took the words out of my mouth right now because yeah. i was gonna that was a topic i was gonna drum on like you have a creative i think comedians have a creative license yes you know uh um Walege, Walege, yes Walege is living in the uk is my mm -hmm. very good aburo so to say yeah. mm -hmm. and we have debates a lot of time mm -hmm. and some issues pop up and say, i'm saying ah, you shouldn't say that i said ah, but DJ Abbas, you know he's a comedian you know mm -hmm. some things you can and i know we always agree to disagree but i'll give you some examples very very quickly um just last week okon the comedian oh yes oh yes um talked about With the rape issue yeah and his slant was basically which he was meant to be funny that look that those women really should not be charging those police officers for rape that because they were doing their job that had no dignity it didn't seem to come out good because sure. he got a lot of backlash sure. for that sure. Sure. another thing i've heard is i see a lot of comedians come on stage in nigeria mm -hmm. and they allude a lot to imbeciles okay in nigerian parlance imbeciles yeah. you know mm -hmm. some of these people are people, people physical, who are challenges. physical challenges you know and 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 lastly, another one is um, <clears throat> in the UK. A lot of them, when they come to the UK, and I totally understand this because some of them have had to sit down before the show. Homophobic. Say, Look, uh, you can, yeah. home, you, you took the words out of my mouth. Sure. So 
at what point do you draw the line? Because at what point does that license that you have okay. not become using those examples I've okay. talked about? All right now. So so one is that w once you're a comedian, the audience determines the kind of joke that you tell. Mm. So if you go to an event and you see that the bulk of the people there are pastors and all so on, you won't do dirty jokes. Okay. Not that you should do dirty jokes anyway, because when you do dirty jokes, you steal 50% of your market. Mm. You cancel 50% mm. of your market. Because nobody wants to try you on corporate events. Mm. And corporate events is where the money is. Exactly. Okay. Um, so most times, when you get into an audience, when you get in front of an audience, before you go in front of that audience, know the texture and the cross-section of the people that you're performing to. Mm. So you know not to offend sensibilities. Mm. One, if you're performing to Hausa people, you know that their religion is very sacred to them. Mm. You won't do jokes about Muhammad, peace be on his name. That would offend any of them. Mm. If you're talking to pastors, you won't do any dirty joke. So if I'm talking to uh, businessmen, my jokes would then be tailored to meet them, meet their audience. Their, audience the, yeah. the audience, tailored to meet the yeah. audience. Where a lot of people get it wrong is there are some people who believe that everything is funny, everything is a go. Hmm. So they, they feel whether it's rape, whether it is. Uh, would you do a, an imbecile joke? No, no, no. I won't. But then again, my, 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 my grouse is this. If I write a book, mm. and in the book I describe an imbecile. You know it goes. People will look at it from academic point. True. If I write about, like Wale Shoyinka did a, book, a poem about Abiku, mm. calling for the second and repeated yeah. time, cast bangle at my feet, mm -hmm. in vain your bangles cast. Another. So now, Wale Shoyinka is talking about a stillbirth yes. that a lot of women are going through. But he's talking as if he's the stillborn child. Okay. And some women will take offense. Indeed. And be like, do you know the torture we are going through? That you are glorifying this child? With but that's academic. He has a which bigger is why, license. Yes. Which is why I told you, I said, it is a lot more tasking for a comedian when you're performing. Because your reaction is immediate. Spontaneous. It's spontaneous. And people actually take a comedian's joke seriously. We're back to comedy is a serious business. Yes. They take the most times when you see a comedian perform somewhere and he tells a political joke, if the politician that is there is in the opposition, they feel like they sent you. That must have happened to you a few times. Oh, several so. times. Several times I I finished telling a joke. Like, Let me give you an example. I was performing somewhere one time. This was when uh, Alex Akieli was yeah, minister Mr. for Thousand. for minister for sports. Before, Alex yeah, yeah, yeah. before uh, yes. So, Alex Akiele was celebrating a goal that somebody, I think, was Stephen Keshi, and he was shouting in the stadium. I was in the stadium, and I saw him. He was different from uh, Mobodo. Okay, Jim. Um, Jim, Jim Mobodo. Yeah. When Mobodo was minister, if you scored a goal, he would clap. So I now said, ah, that is how you know that this honor, this chief, uh, Alex Akele, is an Ajepako. He will shout, ah, hey, oh, you know what? When I finished, was the he guy, in the building? Yes, he was there. The guy that was there, it was a sports award. The guy that was his PA came to me and said, he takes offense. How can I do that kind of joke about his principal? It was, you know, but as we were talking, the man, got to, the man himself walked towards us and said, ah, Ah, Kaede, Bauni, eh, ah, Ali, ah, oh, oh, ole, 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 ah, they gave me five and brought out this five, five naira notes. At the time. A pack, yes, brought a pack of it. Bondu. And gave me. So I turned to the PA and I was like, you, you were just fighting, no, no, I said, you were just fighting about. But he was probably doing his job. But he was Hi, doing his job. Yeah, yeah. So it just means that not everyone will find what you're saying funny. Mm. Some may just be like, let me defend a particular people. If you tell a joke now about the house, you get that people, more in Nigeria, though. Oh, yes. If you tell a joke about the house people, the Igbo man will laugh. But when you now tell a joke about the Igbo people, the house man would also laugh. But the, the house man 
would not like you to tell the joke about him, but would not mind you telling the joke about somebody else. That said, when it comes to disabilities, it is too sensitive mm. for people to even talk about, which is why if you are an MC and a comedian and you're invited to a funeral, there are certain jokes that you don't talk about. Have you done funerals? Oh, several. Several. And sometimes... The whole mood is somber. Nah, I don't care. But the thing is that it is why they invite me to do funerals. To put a slant to it. Oh, I put a slant to it. Sometimes when I talk about it, I say, now everybody's here crying. This Baba, there are many people here. Has he flogged any of you before? <laughs> and you see, you see people raise they, their hand and say, hey, hey. I say, look at him now. Let him come and flog somebody now. You know, people would have a good laugh Context. about that. Good, yeah. Exactly. You, I can put a twist to it and say, hmm, I pray that this Baba does not get there and ask Inja Gabriel questions because he likes to ask questions. You talk about this and say, hope they put some pepper in his casket because I understand that the man likes his food yeah. hot and spicy. So hope they put some pepper in that casket. And then... Um, Hope they also put a Bible because I understand that when he wakes up in the morning, he reads a Bible. And he was very good with numbers. Those are the kind of things that, uh, by the time I'm through with a funeral, you have more reason not to cry mm. because you remember the good things. So I'll, I'll ask what the life of the man was, what is his favorite So you have a sit down, obviously, with the, with the, like with a, with the with people, the event planners and the organizers, and you go through uh, Because there's a very thin line. But with experience, mm. I can walk that path easily. It, it's we can be here forever <laughs> because um, there's so many things. But rape issues, no go area. No, no, they, they, that's that. Um, and no I think th that's a conversation because as comedy is developing as well, I think this, this is like no a conversation there's no, there's no, there's one needs no to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you are an avid. You read a lot of books. I try, and I think. Comedians, I, like, I always say comedy is not easy because you get on stage, mm. you need to know how to articulate your thoughts. Sure. You need to have a broad base of knowledge. Sure. You know, so how in, how intrinsic has a book reading for you personally been? And do you see many more of this generation ingrained in that or they would just rather act on what they see as okay. opposed to what they read? Okay, let me take you back to the original stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy started in the slave uh, camp. Mm with the slaves. Uh, the slaves were the black slaves were the ones that originated stand-up comedy. Because they were all moved from different parts of Africa and lumped into a ship. So the Canaries, the Hausas, the Jaws, the Calabaris, Ghana, 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 yeah. Ghana, Ashantis, and all of them were lumped into a ship and they didn't understand themselves. So when they landed in the plantations, they couldn't understand themselves. So they had to find a common language. So the common language they could speak was Creole or Pidgin English. As they have in Sierra Leone today. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was area. because it was the bastardization of, of English. the English yes, language. Yeah. So master say come hungry now. Mm -hmm. Master say no, 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 touch this. No. So gradually, in the farms, when they finish in the evenings, because they were working, one person would raise a song. Yeah, and they all sing it. And they all sing the song, even when they did not understand the language, because it helped them to walk. Yeah. So they finish working, and in the evening, they sit down and begin to play all kinds of instruments. With them. Then the white masters liked it. And so he will call all of them to come sit in front of his courtyard. And he will sit in the, in the corridor on the, on the balcony and listen to Everything, them. Yeah. So he will say, anyone that has a story to tell should stand up and perform it. That's how stand-up comedy started. So the comedians, the, the black slaves would have their padlocks removed, especially the ones that worked in sugar cane yeah, yeah. So they don't eat the sugar cane. So they don't eat the sugar cane. The ones that were working in the cotton farms didn't have that problem. They would sit down, they would call them. Now, from the reservoir of knowledge that the ones that had stories to tell had, they get up and infused the story of the tortoise, the lion... The in the broken English, English, yeah. In the broken English. And it was so much fun. But it meant that the content you put out as a slave determines how much padlock is remained, how much yeah, padlock yeah, remained. Yeah. So if you're good, the padlock remained open for a long time because the man would want you 
to come and tell more stories the so next you, day. Uh, you had you had a natural freedom. you had a natural inclination to perform better. Perform better. So it meant that you have to go and now learn more stories and form all kinds of. So if the rabbit did this today, tomorrow you look for the hare to do something else. You look for the fox to do another thing. You look for. So you needed all kinds of stories. Meanwhile, you had people in the farm who did not know how to stand up and talk. So you can then ask them for the stories from their places. So in, that, in doing that, you are researching. So the comedian, the, the stand up. The rules have always been the same. Exactly. So you have to now look for material. So you go to this person, he's from Kanuri. He will try with the best possible way that he could tell you the story of the tortoise and the story from his place in the Creole and broken English that he could master and muster. Then you take that story and improve on it and tell it to the master. So that's the same thing that books did. Mm. So now, because they didn't have books at the time, they had to borrow the folk tales from different yes. people. Now, what then happened was that the stories were becoming very interesting the stories were beginning to attract a lot more people from the cities. And theaters were emptying out to the farms. Okay. So people were leaving theaters. They were tired of pantomimes and uh, William to Shakespeare and kind to of... To come and the listen slave to the, the, the slave community with the broken English. And it caught on so well that theaters really did not open. And so the white actors wanted to know why. So they too came to the farmlands and the slave camps to see what was happening. And when they heard the kind of stand-up that That's these slaves were doing, they found out that it was funny because it was told in broken English. Mm. And so what did they do? They went back to their pantomime and theater and painted themselves black, which was how black minstrels started. And so after painting themselves black, they will now talk like the blacks in the most corrupt English that they could muster. So they moved stand-up from the farms on stage. But there was a law that was passed in America that then banned the black minstrels. Mm -hmm. So what then happened was that they went to the farmlands and recruited the black people to come, come and do it. I'm sure a lot of people are hearing this story for the first time. And it's great that it's actually coming from... from but from, I got from all your, that from books. Exactly, from reading. So. Yeah. Um, in terms of knowledge acquisition, yeah, so books certainly are yes, right up there. Oh yes, oh yes. Because the thing is, that it's a dying habit, though. There are three ways to learn: be told something, read about it, or see, see it. Yeah. So, it, it, you may not have been to England, but if you get a book that describes the different places in England, you know enough. A lot of us didn't know what London Bridge was. But but it was never falling down. <laughs> That's what I can tell you. But 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 that that again is this because then we we learned the song. Mm -hmm. I learned the uh, God Save the Queen song yes. before I came to um, uh, to London. I knew it by heart because they taught all of us. So knowledge helps you. And so when you when uh, when when you imbibe knowledge, you hit the ground running. Mm. You are pre-informed. Your thoughts are then fashioned and shaped by that knowledge that you then have. So the more you read, mm. the better you become. What you then find is a lot of people, comedians especially now, who do not read, wait for crumbs to fall from those who read and create as many jokes as possible. Mm. You find some comedians are limited in their creativity because you could see that the person has delivery. Mm. No content. No content. Mm. So those kind of comedians are the types that then take people's jokes because they have to feed the audience that is expecting them Something. to deliver creativity. Is that a separate skill too? Oh, yes, it is. The delivery of a joke. In fact, you could create a joke and tell it and get three punchlines. The person that then steals it can make it eight punchlines. Expand, expand on exactly. it. Using his own experience as there's some people. There's some people that perform Michael Jackson songs better than him. When you hear the person singing the Michael Jackson song, you'll be like, oh man, why do you have covers? Indeed. Whitney Houston killed... No, no, she didn't kill. <laughs>
she, she, I will always she love you. She took the party. Nobody. <laughs> a lot of people. And I, I remember because I, I love country music. Okay. So of course I know I will always love you. Mm. But what Whitney Houston did is actually a criminal offense. <laughs> She say. took that song. She took that song, owned it, and owned it, and pushed Dolly out of. of In of fact, the Dolly, Dolly, Dolly now became the writer of the song. Have you heard some of your jokes in that light? Oh yes, I've heard some jokes, and I've, there's sometimes when I go listen to my jokes, I'm like, because I have I have a I have a skill set that many people don't. If you start telling a joke that I've not heard before, your original mm -hmm. joke, before you get to the punchline, I can create like three punchlines to it. Different slants. Yes. I can say, okay, you're telling a joke and you say, this guy was going to Port Harcourt, he bought a ticket and got into the bus. And when the bus broke down, I've gotten into buying bread on the road. I've gotten into bought egg. He had a running stomach. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to run into police checkpoint. I've gotten to break down of the vehicle. Different skill too. Exactly. So I could make a joke have more punchlines. So most times when you hear my jokes that I really worked on, there's hardly anything you want to add to it. Um, two more things we're going to discuss before you go. You're also a special marshal of the Federal Safety Corps. Oh, yes. I, I was inducted um, in 2008 uh, because I was doing it without even being inducted. I've seen some of your Instagram so I, posts. I, I, exactly. The most recent one where some police officers were across the road stopping. Oh, it was, it was just criminal, to use that word. I get to the checkpoint, like to the junction. The traffic had built up for like three, four hours. And I get there, I come down from my vehicle. There was no accident? There was no accident. And it was just that car, the lights were not working and cars were... And the policemen were sitting right there. And so when I managed to get some sense of uh, decorum, organization, yeah, organization yeah. into the place, and traffic was flowing and they were listening to me, I asked the man, I said, why, why didn't you? He said I should come and ask him. You know, it just shows that some people don't know what service is. Some people don't know. Some people are in the police force not because they want to provide service. They just want to Pay earn check. a salary. That's all. So I've been doing this for so many years. How often do you face that? Uh, uh, every now and then. Mm. Every now and then. Sometimes I... Thank God now that I, because I used to drive myself, mm -hmm. I love driving. Mm -hmm. And so when I get to those kind of places and I step out of the car, I can help clear traffic. It can be two, three, four, five hours, and I'm just there working. You enjoy it? I enjoy it. And so in 2008, they decided to make me uh, a, road, a road safety. I've, 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 I've gotten a lot of... Um, uh, positive uh, response from people mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> some people actually slow down and say ah ali you are doing very well take 500 naira <laughs> don't tell me you don't take it why would i yeah. take it <laughs> i tell it's you guys I, I tell you guys i say, I say thank you thank you thank you there was one, one time one man said ah no ali no i took that one uh, man. <laughs> can you tell us what you took it was i think it was a pack of hundred dollar bills okay the man said, oh, well done, Ali Baba, take, take, take. I said, no. Then I saw his dollar. Ah, I said, okay, bring him. So when he left, I was about like 300 or 400 dollars. The man saw me many years after and said, do you remember me? I said, no. He said, I was driving a sassy young. It wasn't mm -hmm. one car that looks like uh, R, um, X5. Like a Citroen. It's, like, mm -hmm. he, said, he said, I was driving a sassy young. I said, oh, I remember you. And I told him the junction. Because you remember the, uh, what happened well, that day. I, ha I have a memory mm. that... Which is also very important for a yes, comedian. for a stand-up for stand comic. You, you, you need to have a very large memory. Because what you do is that you just filter words into your head exactly. and just leave them in the retrieval zone. And it is when you're performing on stage that you can bring... That's why I can do six hours. Mm -hmm. do you, is it possible to switch off at times? Just oh, yes. Have you, had, have you had moments when you just couldn't deliver? Has it ever happened to you? Blackouts. Or it just didn't, it didn't connect. It's it, it's it's near impossible now because it's second nature. Yeah. It's near impossible yeah. now. But in the first time that I started, like in the 1988s and 1989, I can go blank because I'm trying to connect jokes. But it's because I was learning the techniques at mm. the time. But as soon as I got it, I can start telling a story now and veer off 
I start telling another story and then I'll come, come back, back yeah. to that. Some one. forget to come back. I've seen also, that. Also, many, many forget to come back. And then the audience, if they liked the way the story <laughs> was going, you, you they say you didn't finish this one, then you go back and finish it. It's it's always very interesting. You you have to be someone who remembers a lot of things, mm. and then bring them to bear. Awesome. The program is still this unplugged special with Alibaba, the Godfather of comedy in Nigeria, and we're not gonna go into the last bit of this one right now. <laughs> Alibaba is, Alibaba is coming to the UK to have a show. For the first time. For the first time. Um, I'm not, we've talked about why it's taking you this long. You okay. said it's expensive. You said yeah, because it's, of it's, dollar. It's, it's, but you finally decided to come. And you're coming on Carnival Sunday. Yes. At the uh, Indigo O2. Yeah, O2, uh, 25th of August. Every year in the UK, we see an average of about 15 to 20 comedy shows. Yes. From different acts. Interestingly. So the different. UK has had a very, very good, you know, a very 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 good role of all the top-notch comedians sure, in Nigeria. Sure. Wali is coming now. Okay. So. Okay. Let me. Already let me, in 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 everybody's head. What is what is Ali bringing? What's Ali gonna give okay, us? Okay. Let me tell you one thing. I, I I've met some of my friends and I who come for my January first concert and I'm like, sir, my boy is performing in uh, this thing. Will you go? They're like, I can't go to where they're having that event. And I'm like, why? He said, ah, I can't go and sit there now. So you you see big boys. Everybody suited and booted. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Black and gold is the theme. Yeah, so you're is looking at that what at we're it. getting? Yes, that is it. Okay. Uh, it, it's going to be like an Oscar star. Okay. We're going to have a red carpet. We expect to see you in tuxedo. <laughs> I need to then go. I, I, I need to go and start to there's order. Somebody, so. There's somebody that called me on Facebook. He, he, he sent me a message on Facebook. He said, he had a tuxedo, but he has not worn it in, in a long like, time. I said, well, I said, Chotiriku Mini. <laughs> have you seen my stomach? So I said, I know, it doesn't matter. Then get, he said, that well, his wife, his wife, the wife wants to wear an evening dress. Okay. And so the wife has told him to go and look for, listen, that he used to be a size 40. In the good old days. In the good old days. That the wife is looking for a size 52. Okay. Now. That, do you know what that means? That he's going to wear a tuxedo. Say he can't wear a, a, a agbada and okay. something. I said, so you can wear national dress, but okay. because we want the theme to be Oscar style, classy, classy, so wear wear a tuxedo. So he sent me a message. I said he's gotten the tuxedo now. Okay. They are fitting it so that he can wear. You know, I said, and then if you're too big, you can wear a waistcoat inside to, to compound to the. Compound the <laughs> Oh, now packaging, <laughs> and it's going to be it's going to be grand because um, and what we have, what I'm also doing is that I want to take it beyond Nigerian comedy. Okay. So I want to bring uh, the Ghanaian guy Kojo. Okay. Oh, Kojo, Kojo, yeah, Kojo, yeah. Kojo is doing wonderfully well, Indeed. especially with the British got talent. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to bring him. I want him to, you know, his flavor is no more Ghanaian comedy. It's international. It's now. international. Yes. So I want our comedians to like Kenny Black. Yes. Uh, who is also performing? Okay. Yibo Koko, uh, Benga Denika, yes. um, uh, Ian Evan, okay. and then Tess uh, Elias. Um, Elias, um, then. Um, You've not mentioned the female, though. I. I'm working on. I'm working on two more people. Okay. I probably will get the two people to come on on, um, and then we're rounding it up with. Uh, Two faces, Dibia. Dandy Humorous is also Dandy Humorous is also coming. Okay. Dandy Humorous is uh, an interesting entertainer. Oh, he's been to the UK. I, I yes, like, several I like times. Yeah, several times. His, his his brand is strong. Yes. His uh, materials are relatable mm -hmm. because the thing is, once a comedian is performing and people can see themselves or see somebody they know mm -hmm, yeah. in the performance, the humor just comes easy. Okay. The laughter is not forced. Uh, so that's that's Dandy Humorous. Yibo Koko is, like I told you, has been there for over 30 oh, yes. years. So he and so he's out. going to bring experience to, to this thing. Uh, Benga is coming with that. He has this thing with the Yoruba community. Indeed. And the Yoruba community. Mr. This is, this is, this is the head of... Exactly. <laughs> and he's going to bring that to bear um, on the show. Uh, Tevers is... Uh, uh, and... Uh, Evan, and Evan is a Caribbean uh, comedian, okay. and so he's bring the West Indies uh, people. Um, uh, Tez, uh, what's that? Evan, 
Uh, and then Salvador. I love Salvador. Salvador. He has. He brings. He has South Africa. He has penetrated. You know, from the, that East Africa, South African flavor, he is, slapstick style. He is one liners. He's awesome. He's awesome. And that is one thing that the South African and East African comedians are known for: one liners. Yes, yeah. And the one liners is a, of Dutch origin. Okay. And you know they were the ones that colonized the the zone. So uh, in reading up, I found that uh, they did not. If you listen to their African comedy, yeah. it's one liners. No long thing. No long thing. Mm. So when you start telling a story of how this one want here, but they, they don't have that time. They just do one liners, and so uh, which is one thing that is also working for uh, Trevor Noah. I love Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah, yeah, and Trevor has also now blended into the storytelling. You know, he is so cerebral. Yeah, delivery. He, you you can't expect anything less because when he was when they were delivering um, materials to. John Stewart, yes. of 20 materials that will come in, that they would use yes. every week, Trevor was having about like six, seven, eight. So if 20 materials came in and this guy has the bulk of the materials, and brainer. then when you finally end up using the materials, you've used six of his. So it's it's no brainer, brainer that he should be the one that will continue. And he also had the edge uh, and he came in South in, Africa. He came in, hit the ground running. He had the edge in South Africa because he had the English background, he could speak English better yes. than you know. There was a comedian before him, of course, that's okay. Uh, and uh, David Carr, mm -hmm. David Carr was limited by language. Yes. It is now that David Carr is beginning to break out, break of. out. But if you were to like put a comedian ahead of Trevor, it would have been David Carr. But language, language yeah. was was the thing that held him back. Uh, it happens with a lot of Nigerian comedians as well. You see some comedians that are very good, but because they are limited to pidgin English, mm. they've not broken out of the bound, mm. uh, of the mold. So you, this 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 one is uh, want to make it universal, want so that it's not so it's nearly like a black and white comedy. It's like a black and white comedy. It's well, not going to be Nigerian. We've Nigeria. not had one like that. That much I can yes, tell you. Yes, yes. So, and, and I'm thinking that we're also going to now do, we're going to put a bowl there and all of us will sit, okay. all the stand-up okay, comedians. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, not. It's just not, checking, just checking. It's not Holy Ghost Night. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> so we're going to have a bowl there and we all the comedians will sit down and each person will come and pick one of the words that the audience would have written. Okay. We pick one and then do do a joke out of it. This one tonight, yes. So well, we're, we're we're working towards. I'm that. I'm certainly looking forward to it, and um, sure. we've done. This is our first full program special. We've never done a full program oh, wow. ever on one person. Oh. So it's our first full program thank special. You, thank you. So and thank you've you. earned the right to do that over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> thank you so much. We're looking thank forward so to much. the 25th of August. Yeah. The program has been for the record a one on one with um, the Godfather of comedy in Nigeria. Ali Baba and 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 to ya uh, <laughs> at Toyota Hallelujah Akobome the yes, short yes, version. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you very much. Thank you so much yeah. again. Thanks. And remember, same time next week. Stay tuned. See you then. <laughs>